So some studies say that we looked at that Google's near monopoly has led to all of us paying 30 to 40% more in online ads than we should be. If the courts decide to break up Google's dominance and who knows what that might look like, we might see more competition in the search engine space. First party data is gonna be an extremely important thing for you to do. If you're not doing it today, you've gotta to start doing more to collect data on the front end. And the reality is, is whether or not this antitrust suit goes through, the first page of Google has continued to change and be more difficult week by week, day by day, year by year, including this year of 2024. Don't be the company that has done business the way they've always done it. And when these shifts happen, it almost makes you feel like you're starting from scratch. Hey, my friend, welcome back to the MindShift Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl Evans. And here on this show, we love to help you shift your mind, transform your business, and help you achieve the breakthroughs in both your life and your business. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a topic that's making waves in the digital marketing space. And I know that as a successful business owner, entrepreneur, CEO, or founder, I know that this is a topic that you would want to know about even if you didn't know about it today. And that is Google's antitrust trial and how it could impact digital marketing in the near future. Now, I'll admit right from the get-go that going over legal stuff can sometimes feel dry, but this is something that could directly impact how you advertise and grow your business online. So if you're a business owner, you're a CEO, you're a founder, you're sitting at the C-suite table, I need you to lean in because this episode is very important. So let's break things down in very simple terms so that you can stay ahead. So what exactly is going on, right? So at the heart of this trial, start that which started in 2020, the US Department of Justice is accusing Google of anti-competitive practices. Now they're no stranger to having some lawsuits and accusations like this, but the Department of Justice is saying that Google has monopolized the search engine market saying basically that Google has basically made it impossible for other search engines like Bing or DuckDuckGo to compete. So how has Google done this, right? Well, allegedly they have been paying billions of dollars to companies like Apple and Samsung to make Google their default browser on their devices. And it's not just search. Google has also controlled a massive portion of the online advertising space. They own the ad platforms, they own the exchanges, they own this very channel that we're watching this video on or posting this podcast on in YouTube. And so what does that mean for us as business owners, right? Uh, we need to understand that Google's dominance is being challenged and it could change the digital marketing landscape, right? Full disclosure, my agency, our consultancy, has helped companies grow their business on Google in both advertising, search engine optimization, local search engine optimization, and all of the likes across all the entire digital spectrum, right? So social media, content, email, you name it. So we're fans of what we've been able to accomplish on the platform of Google, but it is very important for us to talk about the big question in the room, and that is what could this trial do to affect your business, right? So first of all, let's talk about a couple of things. If the courts decide to break up Google's dominance and who knows what that might look like, we might see more competition in the search engine space. So right now, Google apparently controls 90% of the US search market. And imagine a day when we're back to searching Bing or Yahoo or even a DuckDuckGo or any other new player that comes up. Um, where they might become a bigger piece of the pie. And this could really mean more options for your consumer to be prevalent, to be present on, which also might mean you might have to move your advertising to those places as well. And there's something that's not being talked about, and I'll talk about it a little bit later, which is a threat that I do not think anyone's thinking about right now, or at least not thinking about it in the holistic sense that we're talking about it with our clients and internally with our teams. So, if there are more search engines because Google's dominance gets pulled and everything becomes a more equal playing field, what we might be able to see though are ad costs going down. Because I don't know about you, but in our clients' businesses over the last 14 years, 
we have seen nothing but costs continuing to rise. Now we're able to monetize, we're able to show an ROI, we're able to get a return on investment. However, it is tougher and tougher and tougher. And it's much more tougher when you're a upper small to mid market company that doesn't have billions of dollars to compete like the big dogs, right? So some studies say that we looked at that Google's near monopoly has led to all of us paying 30 to 40% more in online ads than we should be. And if just imagine if costs came down by 10%. Now I will tell you that if in fact they are price gouging, then I'm all for this whole conversation, right? Because I represent small and mid America. I don't know about you. What I do know is we don't have dollars to waste. We don't have just money we can throw on endless tests. We don't have money we can throw against the wall to see if it sticks. Our clients need return on investment. And that's what our marketing has to do. So this could be a big, big issue that could help small and mid-sized companies, right? It could be a huge issue for marketing budgets. Now, here's one of the big topics, right? And this is the thing that this trial could bring stricter privacy regulations that Google may have to implement. And if the courts decides that Google needs to be more transparent, I mean, it could literally change how we run ad campaigns. What do I mean? Well, we might not have the same sort of tracking capabilities that we have today. We've already seen in a scenario with, with Facebook that they had to do that back when they were char challenged with their privacy and tracking, and they had to rebuild their algorithm. Now, everything's going fine on Meta, let me tell you. Uh, things are working better, I think, than they ever have. And we've been advertising on Meta for our clients, which is Facebook and Instagram, for those that don't know. We've been doing that now successfully now since 2012. I think it's easier now over there than it ever has been. And who knows what that could look like on Google. But the thing that I would encourage is that most of us are going to need to get way more serious about what's what's called first party data. Now that's a fancy industry term that says you need to build your own email list with your own customer and prospect rich data, right? You've got to be more intentional. Like I remember two specific scenarios not long ago, one where a company had 30,000 past customers. They engaged us to, to help reactivate this customer database. And when we dug, dug in, they only had active email lists, uh, an active email list of contact information for about 6,000. I mean, I don't get it. How did you sell 30,000 people something and you only <laughs> have 6,000 customer records? And that's just not going to cut it in the near future. And another company I can think about had an active call center. Their business model was still doing the call center model, which is perfectly fine. Um, which I, I don't have a problem with the way we used to do it and still doing it today, but they had 160,000 people on this call roster. And when I asked how big the email list was, because they were talking about transforming how they were doing things to digital. I mean, we were starting with nothing. It was like a list of about 10,000 people, but they're actively calling 160,000. Clearly one of the first things we did was put together a call into their call script. We put a new process in to transform, transfer those calls to emails. But listen, first party data is going to be an extremely important thing for you to do. If you're not doing it today, you've got to start doing more to collect data, collect emails, collect phone numbers, collect addresses, collect all of that data on the front end. Sometimes you're going to get it on the sales side, but you've got to get it on the front side when they are prospects, because this is the data that Google may or may not be able to provide you in the future, right? So when you're thinking about running ad campaigns on Google or YouTube through their display network, it's now time to really start getting serious about your data tracking and how you're planning your budgets. Because if and when we have to pivot to no longer using Google as the dominant play, then you need to make sure you've got data and you're not starting from scratch on these other platforms. So here's a couple of big ideas that I'd love for you to take away. Number one, and you should always be thinking about this every single year anyway, and that is what can you do to diversify your strategy? Are you putting all your eggs in one basket? I see this all the time in our agency. For the last 14 years, the number one question, the number one concern, the number one request is help our business get more traffic from Google. Still to this day, 14 years in, 
and it is still the number one request. And the reality is, is whether or not this antitrust suit goes through and whether or not things shape differently, the first page of Google has continued to change and be more difficult week by week, day by day, year by year, including this year of 2024, ChatGPT, AI search results, Gemini, Claude, and all of the things that just started here just recently in the second quarter of 2024, where Google is now putting AI search results at the top of the page of Google, not for every search. They're saying it's only for six to 10% of the searches. I see it a little bit differently because I'm in the business, but the reality is those AI search results is a new form of the knowledge graph, which is pushing down the rest of the page. So if you're in the top one, two or three uh, results, let's just say if you're number one, you're still going to get some visibility. But if you're number two or number three, you did a really good job. And in days gone by, you might have gotten 16% of the clicks or 12% of the clicks, but now you're falling further and further down the page. That's for another conversation. But I do believe that it's extremely important today, regardless of this antitrust suit or not, is to start diversifying your strategy. Maybe start looking at Bing. Maybe start looking again at Yahoo. Maybe start looking at DuckDuckGo. Don't go, don't over exhaust your, your resources, but it's time to be mindful. Are we looking at platforms like TikTok and LinkedIn and Amazon, if you're in the e-commerce space, how do we get comfortable understanding how we might perform on those platforms if Google's stronghold falls apart, okay? Number two, be always min uh, managing where your ad costs go and how your performance is going. I think so many people, they get into a realm of thinking and then they shut off other alternatives. I'll, I'll use a social media example. I know it's probably not the Google example, but one thing I find often is, we will think that, well, our buyer lives on this platform or our buyer doesn't live on that platform. And that kind of thinking, I can tell you from 14 years of data running companies, uh, helping companies grow and running my own six businesses prior, I can tell you that the one thing we fail at as entrepreneurs and CEOs and founders, business owners, is we sometimes put blinders on to our own thinking. And what I'm gonna tell, tell you is you've gotta let the data tell you the story. Either way, you've got to be nimble. You've got to be agile and you've got to be able to pivot quickly in this marketplace, right? So you've got to have good data. You've got to have good tracking. You've got to have a good leader leading the strategy. You've got to understand what good tests look like and then what tests should never, ever be run. We're in a rapidly changing environment. And one of the things I love about digital is that it's always changing, which keeps it exciting. One of the challenges is it's always changing <laughs> and therefore it's exciting. Not always in a good way, right? Google updates their algorithm almost every month these days, sometimes multiple times in a month. And sometimes you did something right. Sometimes you did something wrong. Sometimes you did nothing wrong at all. Like a lot of people who got hurt in a number of updates here earlier this year. The goal is be agile, track, everything from click-through rates to ad impressions to conversions. Make sure you've got a robust CRM so you can see all of that. We, of course, are big fans of HubSpot. If you're looking at HubSpot, using HubSpot, don't have someone who's an expert at HubSpot, reach out to us. You can see the information down below. The last step that I will give you here, and this is probably the priority of everything we've talked about today, and that is get serious about your first party data. You need a robust CRM, whether it's HubSpot or something else. You need a robust CRM. Don't just buy the package and set it on the shelf. You need it implemented. You need it integrated. You need data from service to, to marketing, to sales, top of the funnel, to the middle of the funnel, to the bottom of the funnel, to lead scoring. You need it all implemented. It is there for a reason. You've got to make sure that if privacy regulations get tightened, you've got to have a solid foundation on your customer data that you control. That means collecting emails. That means running surveys. That means offering valuable information and education so that people will want to exchange their contact information with you and be able to use that data for better understanding your target audience. You know, listen, to wrap this up, Google's antitrust suit could have a big impact. We don't know when it's going to end. At the time of recording this, they're going back to court again in October. Maybe I'll have an update for you later in the fourth quarter this year. But I got to tell you, if you're a business owner, it's essential. It's key to stay up to date and informed and proactive because every year you're probably sitting down looking at your next year's plan. Don't just look at what you can see. You've got to look at what you can't see. You've got to look at what's coming. And if you don't have anybody in your corner to help you think through that, 
be sure to reach out to our agency, be sure to reach out to our firm and we can sit down and have these conversations, right? The world is always gonna change in digital marketing. And I would tell you, stay diverse, monitor your costs, but more importantly, build that first party data foundation. Don't be the company that has done business the way they've always done it. And when these shifts happen, it almost makes you feel like you're starting from scratch. The reason I can say that statement so confidently is because we have unfortunately had to help so many very successful companies who've put in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, almost feel like it's starting from scratch because of the changes that are happening in digital. Don't let that be you. I hope today was the uh, a great enlightening opportunity. There's going to be more to come. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, be sure to hit the follow, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not on our email list, I'm going to make you the invitation so that we can make sure you are informed because the one thing we don't control is the distribution of these platforms, the podcast platform, the algorithm on YouTube. I don't control whether you're going to see this video or not. So head over to mindshiftcommunity.com. That's mindshiftcommunity.com. The links are going to be in the description or you just go to the website, get on our email list, make sure you stay informed. The next thing is uh, protect your business, no matter what happens in the courtroom. And if you want to dive deeper, again, head over to our website at darylemmis.net forward slash podcast. You can see the show notes from this. You can see the follow-ups. You can also stay informed on our upcoming events where we host our masterminds and exclusive roundtables for successful entrepreneurs like you. My name is Daryl Evans. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Listen, don't let this surprise you. Do, do some planning. And if nothing else, just stay tapped in with us right here. We got you. I'll see you again on another episode. Take care. Hit the subscribe button so you can become a part of the MindShift community. We'll help you shift your mind so you can shift your results.